Hello and welcome to this video on how to use a Confluence database to support your project tracking. Now Confluence is a great tool for managing knowledge and collaborating, but it also offers some great options for helping manage a project. Now of course you might also be using Jira for this, but I've found that getting a stakeholder or executive to go into Jira to look at anything can be very challenging. So using a Confluence database is a great way to give them one place to go to see a complete status or a complete picture on what's going on. So let's take a look and see how Confluence can help support us. If you're unfamiliar with databases though, don't worry, I'll give you some of the basics, but also check out the video up here if you've got a minute for more information. All right, let's dig in. Here we are in Confluence Cloud Premium. Databases should be available for all versions of Confluence though, so you should be able to follow along. Here, I'll just go to a space where I want to add my tracker and then click Create and select Database. Now, you could put this in any space, so if you have a specific space by project, or you could have it ladder up to a parent if you're using its own tree for each project. But here, I'll just drop it right at the top level. And the first thing I want to do is give it a name. So I might call this jQuill Tracker, the name of my project. And right away, it's asking me if I would like to connect to a database. Now, this is a great way to import existing information. Maybe you already have a CSV you've been tracking all this in. You could just click import and then connect it. And I will fill in these fields for you to start you off. You could also connect this directly to Jira, though, if you're using that to track your work. This can be a great way to kind of pre-populate what's going on. All you have to do is type in the project or the JQL statement to go find it. And then you'll be good to go. It'll get a lot of stuff in there for you. In this example, though, we'll start just with a blank database. And right off the bat, we get a few columns. We get a text field, a tag field, and a user field. Now, each of these can be useful, so I'm going to decide to keep them. But of course, if I have to get rid of them, I can just click on the little icon here and delete. But this first field, I'll just name task. And maybe for the tag field, I'll make this a status column. And then for the user, this will be the owner. And here I have a very basic structure. I could just start filling this in with everything that has to happen and keep adding more lines as I need things. And I can just keep going on. And this is where this can be very useful to use in conjunction with Jira. Maybe I don't need all of these to be Jira tasks, but I still have to track them somehow. This lets me do it without having to create that additional ticket. That said, maybe some of these do have tickets. And I'll show you how we can connect those two things in just a moment. In my status column, though, I need to add some statuses. And I can do that just by clicking in here and creating them. So I might have pending. And I can just select which ones are pending. Maybe this one isn't pending, though. Maybe it's in progress. So I'll make this one the correct status. Maybe this one is completed. And maybe my project team is actually blocked. I can't get the team for some reason. And here I can just select owners for each of these. It's the same as at mentioning. And this will be important in a moment because we're going to see how we can do things like save views for just specific people. So I'll give some different owners in here so I can show you that as well. So right away, I have a very basic tracker. This could be very useful, but there's a lot more we can do. So I'm going to click this plus and that will add a new column. And I could add another text field or dates. Maybe I need a due date. And then I can go through and pick the dates things should be due. Optionally, I could add something like a updated date or a due by, you know, any, any kind of date I would need to track. But I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to look for this Jira connection. I mentioned that I might be using Jira to manage this project. Maybe not every line in here has one. But if I add a Jira issue field, I might call this Jira ticket. I then select an instance I have access to, and I can link one or more JIRA tickets. Selecting multi-select lets me add multiples. And then just clicking in that field will bring up every JIRA ticket in that instance. So I'm just going to quickly say some of these are connected to JIRA tickets. Maybe my writing the code is this ticket, and my test the code is this one. Now, of course, these are examples, but you could go through and search and find every ticket that you have built out for your developers or your project team and link them here. 
and include things that don't have tickets. Again, this is a great way to show the complete status of something, especially if someone doesn't want to go into Jira. Now, there are other options for fields. If I have pages in Confluence, I could link those. So maybe I'll add one of that. And I'll call this, you know, documentation. I'll click that multi-select. And then someone can click in here and link to pages that might have information about that project plan or about getting the project team, maybe a process document. So again, quickly putting all this information here. I can also add more information about the JIRA ticket or the page. So if I go to add a column, I may decide I need to show some issue detail, something about that JIRA ticket here. So I'll indicate which column I should look for for the ticket. In this case, it's called JIRA ticket. And then I can select which field from that JIRA ticket I would like to show in the database. Now, not all of these will necessarily have information. So I might pick key just to demonstrate. But this allows me to extract just one field or multiple fields if I need them and show them right here in the database. So here I can see who these tickets are assigned to. Maybe Sarah is responsible for getting it done, but Kevin's actually doing the work. And it isn't next to the JIRA ticket, so I'm just going to click and drag this and put it right next to it. I have similar options for the Confluence pages. I can show page details if I need to, who owns it, who created it, etc. But now I have a pretty good view of my project. Of course, I'd add more entries as I need to. But thinking through my team, I might only want to show certain slices of this to certain people. And that's where another great feature called Views comes in. Up at the top, my default is to show everything. But I'm going to add a view. And I'm going to name this view, you know, Developers. And I realize my developers don't like tables. They prefer to see cards. Or maybe they want to see it in a board view by status. And then I'll add a filter. And the filter I'm going to do is filter on the owner field. And I'll type in Sarah. And here we can see just the things that Sarah is responsible for. So I'll update this view. And now Sarah can come in here and click on developers and only see the things that have her name in it. Now I could do this on any field. And this board view allows folks to drag it left to right, just like we would on a Kanban board in Jira. So this doesn't necessarily update that Jira ticket, but it allows Sarah to come in and quickly indicate if a particular task is blocked. And I could repeat this for each person or each group. So maybe I want my executives to only see things that are blocked. And I know they like a table view. So I'll change my filter. I'll pull up status and I'll say is blocked. I'll click update. And now my executives could come in here and only see the things that are blocked so they could help focus in and get them unblocked. Now, even neater, if you look at the URL, this is unique to this saved view. So if I copy this and include this in a Slack channel, in an email, in a bookmark, I can direct people directly to the view of what they need. This is a great way to keep the team focused just on specific things so they don't get distracted by all the tasks that are floating around under all entries. So taking time to figure out these views and what's most useful for each type of person is a great way to improve its use. One more thing I'll point out about these views if I go to edit it, you can also hide fields. So for example, if I know my developers don't care about the due date or the owner, I can remove those from their view. Now, this might not be the best example for my developers, but it's a great way to improve the usability by stripping away information that they won't find useful or will just get in the way. There is one last feature that makes databases very useful, and that's this search. As our database grows, it can be hard to find things. So we can search just within this database. Maybe I just want to see things about the plan. Here they are. This is a great way to help folks find stuff because they won't have to dig around and look for it. Now, if I go to this three dots, there is one great feature in here. If I have multiple projects, I don't want to have to copy and paste the whole database and then delete everything or build it from scratch. I can just click copy structure. And this will take the structure, the columns and the, the settings and put it in a new page for me. So as I spin up more projects, once I've figured out the structure I want, I can very easily just create a brand new blank database just like it, similar to a template. So another great way to speed up my life as a project manager just by copying the structure. So there you have it. 
a way to use Confluence databases to support projects. Now, again, you're probably using Jira to support some of those tasks or some of the work, but I bet there are things you don't want to have to go make a Jira ticket for, which is where the database is very, very helpful. It puts everything in one spot on a single page that you can control the view of. So you can give different views to different teams to help speed them up in their work or to help convince folks to actually go look at it if they don't want to jump into Jira. So if you like the video, please like it, please subscribe, share it with others, and then use the comments to let me know what questions you have about Confluence or what else you want to learn. I get a lot of great ideas from folks, so please share what you're curious about. Thank you very much for taking time to learn with me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in another one of these soon. Mm -hmm.